For the questions below, replace the x variable in the function's formula with the correct expression using substitution. The inputs of functions can be numbers, variables, or even complicated expressions. The first one has a formula f of x equals x squared. And it's a pretty easy substitution we're asked to do. We're supposed to substitute in an input of 0. So if it helps, you can write down what you're being asked to do uh, here. They're basically saying let x equal 0 because the 0 is in the place of the input. And we're supposed to find f of 0. All right, so you may wish to start by just rewriting the original function formula. f of x equals x squared. A next step could be to replace the x with open parentheses, where you're about to put something or substitute something in where the x was. What is the thing that we want to substitute in? We were told to let x be 0. So we want to put a 0 here and here. Wherever x was in the original formula, that's where we want to we want to put our 0 in. So our final answer will be uh, square the 0, and you just get 0. And that's our answer. The next one's similar. It uses the same rule of f of x equals x squared. But this time, we're going to let x equal 3. So find f of 3. All right, I'll rewrite the rule. But I'll leave the x's as open parentheses so that I have room now to substitute in that 3. And our final answer here is going to be f of 3 is 9. This is a function which squares the input, multiplies it by itself. Now it's a little trickier because here our input is not a number. It's a variable, z. So let's do the same thing. Rewrite the function with open parentheses. And we're going to substitute in x equals z. So let z take the place of any x in the formula. Now what's interesting about this one is we can't simplify it any further than just z squared. That's all we can do. Since we don't know what number z stands for, it's just a variable, we have to leave it as a variable. And that's our final answer. The next step here in the progression is to substitute in something which is not just a number and not just a variable, but actually an expression involving more than one variable. Uh, so let's try to find f of x plus h. Start with the original rule. Put some open parentheses in place of the x. And now what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in x plus h in place of the x. OK, that's great. 
Uh, now, sometimes we want to simplify the results that we get. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that now on this one. Uh, when we're squaring a binomial like this, we can actually just write them uh, side by side, two repetitions in a row. Okay, And then we're going to want to use the FOIL method where we multiply the firsts, the outers, the inners, and the lasts. Get all combinations of those. Uh, so that's going to give us uh, x times x makes x squared. And we'll put plus uh, x times h. plus h times x. And the lasts would be h squared. Uh, so the idea is that this is the f in FOIL, the firsts. This is the o, the outer terms. Uh, this one will be the inners. And these are the lasts, that's FOIL. And there should be four terms at the end. And now we can just combine any like terms like eight, uh, XH and HX are alike. So we can just add them together. And we'll get two XH plus H squared. That's our formula. Okay, so for this next one, um, I'm going to want to rewrite the formula. And I'm going to leave just some open parentheses here. Wherever the x's appear. Okay, great. Now let's substitute in what we're asked to substitute in. So one plus T. Okay, make a little more room for myself here. All right, let's uh, expand the one plus t. All right, and I want to do FOIL on this. So firsts, outers, inners, lasts. And I'm also going to want to distribute this uh, negative 7 to both of those terms. All right. One times one makes one. One times t makes t. t times one makes t. And t times itself makes t squared. I want to keep those parentheses on there because the 3 is going to be multiplied by everything. And then we'll have minus 7 minus 7 t. Now I'll go ahead and distribute this 3 to all the terms. It's always good 
um, practice not to try to do more than one step at a time. So like here, I could have combined those T's, but instead I chose to distribute. So I'm just gonna follow that distribution through and I can combine the T's later, but I don't wanna to try to do them at the same time because that's an easy way to make mistakes. All right, so. All right, let's go ahead and now we'll combine some of the like terms, like three minus seven, for example, it's gonna be a minus four. They're both numbers, so they could combine. Uh, I see we've got a three T, three T and minus seven T. So that's gonna be six T minus seven, which is negative T. And our three T squared can stay. And it's a good final answer.